World Trade Center 7. This to me is the smoking gun of all of this. Here's a 47 building that had all these interesting tenants. Now 47 building, uh, story building in most cities would be the largest building in, in, in the town. I mean it's a huge building. But here you have the Department of Defense, SEC, IRS, the CIA's largest, second largest office, the Secret Service's, I think, largest office, the Office of Emergency Management, plus all these financial institutions, Solomon Smith Barney, Provident, ITT, Harvard, Hartford Insurance, and American Express, all within this building. I mean, just this incredibly secure, strategic building, you know, across the street from World Trade Center. Now, more on the latest. So here is a video from the BBC, and this has happened before. International news getting it wrong, not following script, uh, or they were released information ahead of time. But this is the BBC announcing that the World Trade Center 7 has collapsed, even though it's clearly evident behind her back that you still see the building standing there. So watch this incredible video. This is 20 minutes now, before the building the actually collapsed. The latest building collapse in New York, you might have heard a few moments ago, was talking about the Salomon Brothers building collapsing. And indeed it has. Apparently that's only a few hundred yards away from where the World Trade Center towers were. And it seems that this was not a result of a new attack. It was because the uh, building had been weakened uh, during uh, this morning's attacks. We'll probably find out more now about that from our correspondent, Jane Stanley. Jane, what more can you tell us about the Salomon Brothers building and its collapse? Well, only really what you already know. Details are very, very sketchy. There's almost a sense downtown in uh, New York behind me, down by the World Trade Centers, of uh, just an area completely closed off as the rescue workers try to do their job. But this isn't the first building that um, has suffered as a result. We know that part of the Marriott Hotel next to the World Trade Center also collapsed as a result of this huge amount of falling debris from 110 floors of two, the two twin towers of the World Trade Center. As you can see behind me, the uh, Trade Center appears to be still burning. We see these huge clouds of smoke and ash. And we know that behind that, there's an empty piece of what was a very familiar New York skyline, a symbol of the financial prosperity of this city, but uh, completely disappeared now. And New York is still unable to take on board what has happened to them today. Presumably there were very few people in the Salomon building when it collapsed. I mean, th there were, I suppose, fears of possible further collapses around the area. That's what you would hope because this whole downtown area behind me has been completely sealed off and evacuated apart from the emergency workers. That was done by the mayor, Rudy Giuliani, uh, much earlier today uh, because of, the course, the dreadful collapse of the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center. But uh, New York very much a city still in chaos. The phones are not working properly. The subway lines are not working properly. And we know that down there near the World Trade Center, there are three schools that um, are being turned into triage centers for emergency treatment. And I know that over in New York Harbor, where the famous Statue of Liberty is. So now watch this. It's Jane, I think many of us, when we heard the news, perhaps on the radio earlier today, were uh, completely flabbergasted by it and, and just couldn't un comprehend it. I mean, it, was, it almost sounded too far-fetched. Um, I was wondering what it's felt like for you being in Manhattan. Well, unfortunately, I think we've lost the line with uh, Jane Stanley in Manhattan. Perhaps we can rejoin her and follow that up later. Very interesting. Building number seven at the World Trade Center was a 47-story building with a steel frame. No airplane crashed into it, nor did the towers fall onto it. However, this building disintegrated on September 11th. This satellite image shows the World Trade Center about a year before the attack. Building 7 is the tall building at the top. Building number 1 is the North Tower. You can distinguish it from the South Tower by its antenna. Buildings 4, 5, and 6 were office buildings. Building 3 was a hotel. 
The attack on September 11th destroyed all seven of these buildings, and it damaged surrounding buildings as well. Here is a view from an airplane of the rubble of Building 7. The pile is very small. How did a 47-story steel building crumble into such a tiny pile of rubble? The Bush administration wants us to believe that fire caused it to disintegrate. Fires started in Building 7 at around 9 o'clock in the morning, a few moments after the plane crashed into the South Tower. These fires burned slowly all day. This photo shows the fires at 3 p.m. The fires are not easy to see because they are small, and the air is full of dust and smoke. Nearby buildings and reflections make it difficult to figure out where Building 7 is, so I'll fade out the other buildings for a moment so that you can see Building 7 more clearly. There are flames coming from only a few of the thousands of windows of this large building. Most floors do not have fires, and those that do are burning in a few small areas only. Compared to other office fires, these are small. Why didn't the sprinkler system extinguish them? This photograph shows the rear of Building 7. This side of the building doesn't have many fires either. There are no fires anywhere along the base of the building. Incidentally, in the background of this photograph are buildings number 5 on the left and 6 on the right. Both of those buildings have very serious fires burning inside. The government has never bothered to explain how Building 5 ended up with such serious fires. Despite the fact that the fires in Building 7 were so small that the sprinkler system should have extinguished them, at about 5.30 in the evening, the building suddenly imploded and crumbled into a pile of rubble. How did a few small fires cause Building 7 to collapse? According to Bill Manning, editor-in-chief of Fire Engineering, a magazine for fire departments, fire has never destroyed a steel building. I remember getting a call from the uh, fire department commander telling me that they were not sure they were going to be able to contain the fire. And I said, you know, we've had such terrible loss of life. Maybe the smartest thing to do is, is pull it. Uh, and they made that decision to pull. And then we watched the building collapse. Now the term pull, which you just saw Larry Silverstein use, is an industry term that means to demolish, a controlled demolition. What did Larry Silverstein exactly say here? Did he say World Trade Center 7 was a controlled demolition? If so, is it conceivable that through all the melee and hysteria that was going on on the morning of September 11th, a demolition crew could have came in and taken down World Trade Center 7 within seven hours? Most controlled demolitions take up to two weeks in intense planning to make happen. If this is the case, the only explanation that makes sense is that a controlled demolition was planned way in advance of September 11, 2001. I mean, just notice the complete difference between World Trade Center 1 and 2 and its collapse at free fall, free fall speed and World Trade Center 7. One was an explosion, or two were explosions and with tons of dust. And the other one is looks like those old Vegas hotels that they pull down. You can see the top part of the roof that had all the, I guess, air conditioning units and stuff like that collapsed inside first before the outer walls collapsed. A very methodic, slow, went per down perfectly. You know, if there was fires gave away the support, some fires are going to burn hotter in other areas. How did it burn evenly across all the levels all at the same time and all have the exact same steel melt and give at the exact same time without controlled dem dem demolition? Years later, there's no official answer why World Trade Center even collapsed. It's not even in the 9-11 report. And yet, it, I mean, if it's a huge building, and it, it went down that day, and it's not even there. It's 300 feet away from the Twin Towers with uh, World Trade Center 7, or World Trade Center 5 and 6 in between. So here's a aerial footage. Uh, it's a little deceiving because obviously World Trade Center 1 and 2 are these, you know, very big, tall buildings. I think World Trade Center 6 and 5 are probably only maybe 10 stories tall. So, you know, their footprints may be large, but there, there is a, a huge difference between the, the sizes of them. But you can see the, the distance. I mean, it's, you know, it's a, it's a good distance between the, between the two towers.
Uh, and World Trade Center 6 and 5 did not collapse. Uh, their, their skeleton remains were there, even though they had much more fire damage than World Trade Center 7 had. So there you can see the remains of 5 and 6, and then World Trade Center 7 collapsed into itself. In fact, it's not even part of the same complex, but really when you come to look at it, I mean, there's a huge, you know, five-lane, six-lane road in between the two of them, and it's not even in the same block as the World Trade Center. Plus, no plane hit it, no building hit it, and only small fires were seen on multiple floors. So again, here's some of the, the pictures. Not a big fire by any means. Especially when compared to World Trade Center 6, I think this is. Much more raging fire, evenly spread throughout the, the building, and yet that did not collapse. And it collapsed into itself in 6.8 seconds. That again. Come on. Yeah, that shit. It's gone, man. For Larry Silverstein to say pull it uh, and giving the order, which uh, pull is a term that de only demolition people use, for them to pull the, the building and watch it collapse, which is his exact words. I gave the order to pull the building and then we all watched it collapse. The collapse was symmetrical, meaning that all support must have failed at the exact same time if their theory was to be held correct. These are some also interesting things. There was all the files from Enron were in there for uh, that the SEC office had. 